So for this top five list, I'm going to be listing my top five movies from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you've never participated in one of the top five lists on this show, it's pretty simple. Whenever I decide what the topic is going to be, I make a post on social media. Usually Facebook is the primary source of how I receive lists, but I post them on my Twitter and Instagram as well at D Diamond Podcast saying, you know, for example, this month I'm going to be doing top five movies from the MCU. If you want to uh, participate, leave your list in the comments and I will read them on the show. And what I love about these top five lists is really the, the engagement and the way it kind of makes you think about how you order you know, movies or TV shows and why you rank them where they do compare them to other people. And you're like, well, you know, maybe, maybe this would have made my list or it might've, you know, been knocked down from number five to number six. Uh, who knows, you know, that that's the beauty of these top five discussions. And I can't believe that we haven't done this list yet. Uh, out of all the topics that we've covered, but I think, you know, with, with the MCU being, I guess, down in popularity from where they were, um, you know, leading into Avengers Endgame uh, back in 2019, it, it, it is, it has waned in popularity. I still really enjoy it. I get excited for the most part. Um, we did recently wrap uh, season two of Loki, which I thought was fantastic. I'm not going to get into really any spoilers because I know that the finale is still pretty fresh out there and there are those that haven't seen it yet, but it has kind of restored my faith in the MCU a little bit. Um, I don't want to get too much into the, the problems I have with Marvel um, that that could be its own separate podcast. And I'd love to have a panel of people uh, to discuss that, but we're discussing top five movies. And I, I laid out a couple of ground rules uh, when I posted this, um, on Facebook that you could only pick the Marvel studios movies. So like the Fox X-Men movies or Sony's Spider-Man, like specifically the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield movies, those movies were not eligible to be put on the list. I know with everything going on with the multiverse, you could say everything is canon, but I wanted to keep it kind of simple. And honestly, it, it makes the list a little harder, I think, to not include those movies. Because if if we could, you know, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man 2 might be my number one. It's still arguably my favorite superhero movie of all time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read my list, um, my, starting with my honorable mentions, and then go five through one and give an explanation as to why I ranked them the way they did. And then I'll read everyone else's list. Uh, got a lot of lists, and this might be one of the most popular top five lists that uh, we've had here on the podcast. So uh, really exciting stuff. Starting with my honorable mentions... Um, I've got three. I have Captain America, the Winter Soldier, and I know that made a lot of people's top five list. I think it's an excellent movie. One of the best movies in the MCU because it's one of those movies that kind of transcends its genre. You know, you could take all the Marvel elements out of it and it would be a great like spy espionage thriller type of film. But I think adding Captain America was perfect. The storyline was great. And it's Captain America might have the best series of movies in the MCU. If you look at the overall body of work, but I love winter soldier, really, really good movie. This might be where we get a little testy. Um, I have Avengers Endgame and my honorable mentions, and I'll explain it when we get to the actual list. And I, I love Endgame. It was a fantastic event type movie that in my opinion lived up to the hype. Um, I saw it multiple times in theaters, despite the fact that it is three hours long, but I think it had to be three hours. That's one of those movies that I don't think you could have really cut anything because it was this build up to a, you know, 10 plus year storyline that spanned 
multiple movies and really change the way that we look at doing a series of movies like that. Marvel used the TV episodic format, but in movies and it worked. But as much as I loved Endgame, there's another Avengers movie that I liked a little more, but we'll get into that here in just a bit. My last honorable mention is Spider-Man Homecoming. I was thrilled when they announced that Spider-Man was going to be part of the MCU. Um, I think Tom Holland has been an excellent Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Um, I, the way I look at it is I think Tobey Maguire had the best Peter Parker. Andrew Garfield had the best Spider-Man and Tom Holland has the perfect balance of both. I don't think he plays Spider-Man specifically better than Andrew Garfield, but I think he's a better Peter Parker than Andrew Garfield was and vice versa with Tobey Maguire. So I think he's a good mix of both. Um, I liked that storyline where, you know, Peter Parker's a little bit younger. We get to see what his life is like in high school. Michael Keaton reinvented to me a very average Spider-Man villain and vulture. And of course the, the twist where it turns out he's the father of the girl that, that Peter's, you know, taking out that, that was just, I remember still to this day hearing the gasps in the theater when that reveal happened. One of the coolest twists ever, but moving into my, actual list. My number five is Thor Ragnarok. I enjoyed the first Thor movie, uh, Thor, the dark world. Not so much. Uh, they leaned really heavy into the, the Norse God mythology with the first two, which is not a bad idea, but to me, it felt almost disconnected in a way from the overall tone of the MCU. And then Taika Waititi comes in with Ragnarok and it's that nice blend of fun action, good story, great characters, and some funny humor. And it's one of the most rewatchable movies in the MCU, in my opinion. If there's ever a, a Marvel movie that I hope is just on TV and I'll sit and watch and have some fun with it, it's Thor Ragnarok. And that's why I think it deserves to be on anybody's top five list. My number four is the movie that started it all. Uh, the original Iron Man released back in 2008, kicking off the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And we had no idea that that was going to really happen. I, I, I was familiar with Robert Downey Jr., but I wasn't familiar much with his work. I knew he had, you know, all the drug problems and everything. And he was cast in this role. And I'm like, well, Iron Man was kind of a, a lower B or a, a C level character in Marvel and Robert Downey Jr. made it one of the most iconic roles in modern movie history. You know, Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. Tony Stark is Robert Downey Jr. There's no one else that could have played that role. And of course the, the end, the infamous end credit sequence with Nick Fury saying, I'd like to talk with you about the Avengers initiative I can remember going to the Ridge Theater in Pace, Florida with a group of friends of mine, and I had had the end credit scene spoiled for me. So I was trying to convince them to stay, but at first they didn't want to, and then I, in a roundabout way, told them what was going to happen. And of course, you know, everybody went nuts when it, it did happen. So, uh, and it's also set the stage for Marvel, you know, putting post credit scenes at the end of their movies. Uh, number three is uh, the most recent entrant. Uh, oh, I know the Marvels just came out. I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but uh, I will say Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is my number three. When Guardians 1 came out, I had no expectations because I had read the comic books and I thought they were stupid. I was like, this is going to be Marvel's first major miss. And I loved those characters. I fell in love with them almost immediately. Um, one is still one of my favorites. Two is still good, but Guardians 3 was a wonderful farewell to those characters. And it, it really 
showed the depths of their friendship and the fallout with what happened with Gamora and Endgame and seeing them all band together one last time. I thought the high revolutionary was one of the best villains in the MCU. I liked that the story was rocket centric. We got a lot of great stuff with guardians three and it, it was much more emotional than I was expecting it to be. Yes, yeah, still has its humor like you would expect from a Guardians movie, but it's got a lot of heart to it, and I really, really enjoyed it. Number two is the Avengers movie I was talking about earlier. Avengers Infinity War is my number two. The reason why it is above Endgame to me, Endgame has great moments from when, you know, Captain America grabs Milnir. The, of course, the scene when everybody who was wiped out by the snap comes back to life and you hear Captain America say that line, Avengers assemble, and you've got Thanos' forces running up against the Avengers and all the other Marvel heroes. Amazing stuff. Really, really great. I think Infinity War is a better movie because it, established and solidified Thanos as one of the best villains in modern movie history. And I'll tell you why what makes a great villain is one that believes he is not a villain. He believes that he is truly doing the right thing. And the, the, the difference is there's a line that a hero won't cross in order to make that reality happen. The villain there, there is no line that they won't cross and you could look at it as Thanos's movie, like he is the protagonist and the Avengers are trying to stop him from getting the Infinity Stones. I don't remember seeing that much depth into a villain in a Marvel or really a comic book superhero movie uh, in a long time. I thought it told great, it was great character development. It was great story and what's crazy is that the primary character, in my opinion, is a CG creation. Of course, you know, brought to life by Josh Brolin. Um, excellently, by the way. Um, I just, I loved following Thanos' story and just the, the craziness of him wanting to commit genocide. But he had a logical explanation for it. And it just made him such a great character. Yeah, it might, might, that might make me morbid, but it's just my opinion. But I, I love, love Infinity War. It was actually on TV the other night, and I found myself getting lost in it again. So, such a good movie. And of course, when the, the snap happens, and you, know, you see the fallout from it, and when the movie ended, you could hear a pin drop in the theater. And it was just unlike anything I'd ever felt. Much like my number one, for the opposite reason. Spider-Man No Way Home is my favorite MCU movie. The hype for this, and I know that it was only a couple of years ago, but the hype for this movie was insane. You know, when the first teaser came out and it was just... Spider-Man fighting Doctor Strange. You're like, okay, this will be kind of cool. You know, I, I like Doctor Strange. I like Benedict Cumberbatch. I love Spider-Man. So obviously I'm going to see the movie anyway. And then we found out that Alfred Molina was coming back as Doc Ock. And I'm like, okay, this, this is kind of cool. And then Willem Dafoe is coming back as Green Goblin. And we start seeing you know, all these different villains from the Sony Spider-Man movies coming in, but no reference to Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man variants. And we're all thinking, you know, and I, I know it was pretty much leaked because you know Andrew Garfield, I think he door dashed something in Atlanta at the time they were filming. But the thing is like, why would you bring in, these specific actors playing these specific characters if you're not going to bring their superhero counterparts. And you could say the story is kind of disjuntled and there there are 
some plot holes in it, but it's a fun movie and it has a lot of heart in it. And you see at the end, it's really a long origin story for Peter Parker, because at the end he becomes the Spider-Man that we all know that's on his own. And he's at that street level of fighting crime. You know, no one knows who he is by the end of the movie because of the spell that Dr. Strange puts out to make everybody forget that he's Spider-Man. And it's about Peter Parker making that tough sacrifice for humanity, you know, because he, he takes the responsibility that is bigger than himself. And that's what makes Peter Parker such a great character. And of course, you know, the, the overall theater experience was great. You know, because I can remember when you see the Doc Ock arms for the first time, everybody's cheering. When you see the Goblin Bomb for the first time, everybody cheers louder. And when Andrew Garfield Spider-Man comes through the, the portal and he takes his mask off, it was probably the loudest reaction I've ever heard in a movie theater. I can remember a guy sitting in the second or third row and he's jumping up and down out of his seat. I'd never seen that before at a movie theater. And that movie was so good that when my wife and I left, we kind of looked at each other and we're like, you want to go see it again tomorrow? And we did. And I saw that movie five times in the theater and I enjoyed it every single time. And even the fifth time, not so much, but the fourth time that I saw it in theaters, people were still cheering, you know, when Matt Murdock showed up and when the Spider-Men showed up. And of course, you know, the shot of the three of them on top of the, the head of the Statue of Liberty was uh, was amazing. I'd love to get that framed and signed by all three Spider-Men. That, that would be like a, an absolute prized possession. So, yeah, is it the best movie in the MCU? Probably not, but it's my personal favorite and I get the most enjoyment out of it because... Spider-Man was such an important character to me growing up and getting to see all those actors come back. And it was like they had never missed a step. I had already put him in that category anyway, but to me, it cemented Willem Dafoe as one of the best comic book villains of all time. And I, it's, I think it'd be really tough to dispute that. So those are uh, my top five movies from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And now we're going to dive into your list. We actually got quite a few and we're already going longer than I expected uh, here on the show. So we're going to run through these. First up, we have Steve Wise, former guest of the show. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be his five through one because a lot of people didn't number them. Um, but I'm going to go through five through one as, um, as they're listed. Thor Ragnarok. Captain America Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Avengers Endgame. No objection to that list at all. All five excellent, excellent movies. Jonathan McIntosh, uh, number five, Doctor Strange, four, Iron Man. Well, let me back up to Doctor Strange. I like the Doctor Strange movies. Um, I even liked Multiverse of Madness, even though it disappointed a lot of people. But I think when it comes to like best cast characters, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange absolutely has to be up there. Number four, the original Iron Man. We talked about that earlier. Spider-Man Homecoming. Captain America, the first Avenger. Really great origin story. And, and getting to you know see Steve Rogers get the super soldier serum and seeing like the montage of him performing in these different shows because they don't want to risk him getting killed is it was a great mix of humor and action. Just like, just like most of the Marvel movies are. Uh, and his number one is Avengers Endgame. Armes Jackson, also a listener of my other podcast, the nerd cave retro show, uh, Iron Man, Avengers, Infinity War, Guardians of the Galaxy, the original one, Black Panther, another incredible movie. Um, that was, it was tough when, um, you know, when Chadwick Boseman passed away and how that affected Wakanda forever. But he, he was another one that, you know, he is 
T'Challa. He is the Black Panther. Like, you felt that anytime, uh, even when he was introduced in Civil War. And I, what I really loved about Black Panther is that it really introduced a culture to the world. You know, seeing Wakanda and how it fit into the Marvel society, I thought the characters were excellent. Just an overall really, really good movie. And his number one is Thor Ragnarok. Devin Bryan, Avengers Infinity War, Black Panther, Ant-Man. The Ant-Man movies get a lot of flack. And Quantumania, I won't really defend. But I still think the original Ant-Man movie was really fun. And it came out at a time that the MCU movies were feeling a little too formulaic. And I really liked, you know, the the heist crime aspect that it added. And who doesn't like Paul Rudd? Uh, let's see. Ant-Man, The Avengers, and Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok is quite the popular choice. Jake Sasser, funny enough, when I mentioned that story about going to the ridge to watch the original Iron Man, Jake was there when, uh, when we saw that. Uh, fun, fun times. Guardians Volume 1, Spider-Man No Way Home, Iron Man, Avengers Endgame, and Captain America The Winter Soldier. He is a huge Captain America fan, so I know that I knew one of those movies would be on his list, and I, I figured it'd be Winter Soldier. Another listener from the Nerd Cave Retro Podcast, Mr. Carlos Longoria, and of course his uh, username is I Am The Rampage. Number five, Iron Man. Four, Thor Ragnarok. Three, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And he says, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Uh, Michael Rooker was so good as Yondu. I mean, he's great in, in everything he does, but uh, Guardians 2 is one of the more underrated Marvel movies, in my opinion. Um, I really like Kurt Russell as Ego. Um, the, the stuff they did with Yondu and really his character coming full circle was, was brilliant. Uh, number two, Spider-Man No Way Home. And number one is Avengers Infinity War. Wally Phelps, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Captain America Winter Soldier, Avengers Infinity War, Spider-Man No Way Home, and number one, Avengers Endgame. So, there, there's so... <coughs> Excuse me. There are subtle differences. Let me get some water here. Mm. This only happens when I do the top five list because I don't stop talking. <clears throat> um, there are a lot of similarities with these lists. A lot of people are including Endgame, a lot of people with No Way Home. But there, there are some some subtle differences, but I, I have no issue with, with Wally's list. His is really, really good. Greg Parker in no particular order, Iron Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Infinity War, Endgame, and Spider-Man No Way Home. Jacob Craig, one of the co-hosts over at the Open Micros podcast. So uh, go check out that podcast. I've been on it a couple of times. Uh, him and Jason do really good stuff, really great interviews with uh, comedians. They do, um, you know, episodes with the two of them just talking. It, it's really, really good stuff. So go check out Open Micers. Number five, Captain America Winter Soldier. Perhaps the most underrated in the franchise because Civil War followed right after. Winter Soldier was full of moments that made me go WTF on the first watch through. In one film, they turned the whole universe upside down and way before Infinity War did the same thing. I gotta be honest with you, I think Winter Soldier is a better movie than Civil War. Civil War, it's got great moments. We're introduced to Black Panther, we're introduced to Spider-Man. The airport fight scene is one of the best in all of Marvel. But story-wise, I think Winter Soldier is better. Everyone was hyped for Civil War, but I felt like there needed to be a little more buildup for the the split 
between the Avengers teams. And I, I just think they kind of rushed into it a little bit. You know, they just gave a brief explanation at the beginning and then Tony's like, yeah, I think we should do this. Steve's like, no, nah, I don't think we should. And then they just kind of choose their sides and that's that. Number four, Guardians of the Galaxy. I had very low hopes for Guardians going into it because I never read the comics, but it proved to be the most original film in the MCU upon its time of release. In terms of soundtrack and character building, Guardians is unmatched. It's amazing how Marvel ever tried to fire James Gunn. Yeah, but I mean, he's doing pretty well for himself, though. Um, he's going to be missed, though, at Marvel. Like, I, I love those Guardians movies. I, I'm right there with you, Jacob. I had no expectations or low expectations actually going into that movie. And you're right in the, the soundtrack is almost like its own character because of the role it plays in all three of the movies, three amazing soundtracks, but they're more than just that. In my opinion, number three, Spider-Man homecoming, the journey for Spider-Man to join the MCU alone should put Homecoming on everyone's list, but Tom Holland mixed with Michael Keaton's original take on Vulture rivaled the Maguire films for me. Yeah, Homecoming is... It was really, really good. Um, it really felt like... and I, I Well, I'll say this. I like that they skipped over the origin story. You know, Spider-Man's origin is like Superman's. We all know what it is. We don't need to see it again. Number two, Thor Ragnarok. Thor had the worst solo movies up until uh, Taika Waititi completely transformed the character in his universe, making the funniest and one of the most heartfelt films in the series. Totally agree. It's Ragnarok is so fun and so rewatchable, as I was saying earlier. And number one, Avengers Endgame. I can understand why you could dispute Endgame being the best movie because you have to watch over 20 films to understand its full effect. But for the fans that watched from day one, it made everything pay off. I honestly wish it was the last film in the MCU. That's a discussion for a whole separate podcast. Maybe we could do that sometime next year. Should the MCU have ended after Endgame? A lot of people would say yes, and there's been post-Endgame stuff that I've really enjoyed. Some of it not so much, but you could make the argument. I, I think we should make that happen. Uh, that'd be a great discussion. Uh, Logan Mead, Thor Ragnarok is his number five. Number four, Age of Ultron. I haven't seen that list, that one on a list yet. Um, I, I enjoy Age of Ultron. I thought James Spader was perfectly cast um, in that role. I wish that they had done a little more with him and maybe through the multiverse they'll bring him back. Uh, I will say he is one of the, the more underused or mishandled villains in, in, in the entire MCU. But no, uh, Age of Ultron was a, a good movie. Number three, Infinity War. Two, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. And number one, Spider-Man No Way Home. Quentin Garcia, Endgame, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, Captain America Winter Soldier, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And he says, please give this movie more credit. It was incredible. Yeah, Shang-Chi was a really solid movie. And I, I hate that we haven't seen that character since. I liked how they hearkened back to the Mandarin talk from Iron Man 3, and they even brought back uh, Trevor Slatery, Ben Kingsley's character from that movie, because he played a fake version of the Mandarin. And we got to see the real Mandarin, and it was... The way they circled back with that was, was so good, and some of the best action scenes that I can remember in a Marvel movie, I just felt like it kind of got lost in the shuffle because a lot of those movies post end game were just dealing with the fallout of what happened in that movie. And there's just been such a, a slow burn to the payoff for what the multiverse saga is going to be. And we still don't really know what it is, you know, from Iron Man, we knew that it was leading to the Avengers being formed. 
Then when the Avengers movie came out, we got the post credit scene with Thanos. So we knew that he was coming and that led up to Infinity War and Endgame. And we've gotten some multiverse stuff, but it, other than Loki, it hasn't really been explained well. So we'll see what happens. But I I have a theory on what's going to happen, but again, we'll save that for another podcast. Uh, let's see, where do we live off? Oh, Matt Nelson, Thor Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Winter Soldier. Miss Samantha Diamond, uh, the queen of the castle here at uh, here at the Diamond Residence. Number five, Thor Love and Thunder. Okay, that hasn't been mentioned yet, too. That movie gets crapped on way more than it should. Is it a little too goofy? Maybe. But I'd still watch it over Thor and Thor the Dark World. I like that they brought Natalie Portman back. I gave I thought they gave her character some nice closure. I will say my biggest gripe with it is that they severely misused Christian Bale's gore character. Um, I thought he was great, but that's been a problem with a lot of the Marvel movies. They kill the villains off after one movie when there's so much more that could be done with them. Number four, Spider-Man No Way Home. Three, Infinity War and Endgame. And she's listed that way because, and she's right, Infinity War and Endgame are basically one movie, just split into two parts. So I, I'll i give her that one. Number two, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. And number one, Thor Ragnarok. Uh, two more here. Jason Robbins, of course, you know him as uh, my co-host over at the Nerd Cave Retro Podcast. He was on this show a few weeks ago as part of the John Carpenter Roundtable. The first Iron Man. Uh, in Avengers Endgame, Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor Ragnarok, and Captain America the Winter Soldier. And last but not least, Mr. Greg Phillips. Number five, uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier. Four, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Number three, Civil War. Number two, Infinity War. And number one, Avengers Endgame. So those are your list for top five movies of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thank you to everyone for submitting your list. Uh, this gave me a lot to think about, and I, I would love to hear what you all think. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you want to write me, you can write me at ddiamondpodcast@gmail.com, gmail.com, or you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at ddiamondpodcast. Let me know what you thought of uh, these lists. You know, I, I'd love to have more Marvel discussions here on the podcast, whether it's a, you know, what if scenario not to, to play off of the animated series, but uh, do like a what if scenario, uh, whether it's reviews, wherever the case may be. Uh, definitely, I would love to, to hear your feedback. 